What's up guys, hope you're doing well today. My video for you today is on how to beat players that like to speed cheese. Now if you have any ideas on other types of cheese that I can talk about in a video, make sure to leave it in the comments and we'll get to that at some point. But for today we're just talking about the players who abuse speed and the things they can do with it and how you can combat that yourself. So I had actually started making notes for this video earlier, but when we streamed on Saturday we played a guy who was just the most expert cheeser of all time, and we got some great footage for this video. I got dominated early on, but eventually we figured it out and got the win. So plenty of good video to show you exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of times I was messing up and making wrong decisions because this guy was an expert cheeser at a much higher level than you're probably going to see. But I've gone back and looked at the video and I can give you advice on what decisions I should have made and hopefully you can implement that into your game. So in the middle ranks I know that there's a lot of cheese going on especially with speed so this is probably going to be valuable for a lot of people. Having a lot of speed in your lineup doesn't automatically mean it's cheese but if you take a look at the lineup right here he's got a couple of silver guys in there and he also has the diamond Kenny Lofton but then as you see the gameplay as it goes on you'll see exactly why I say it's cheese and it's not just because he has those speed guys in there. So let's get into it. Like I said I was streaming and made a lot of bad decisions but I'm gonna let the first inning play out see what happened and then we're gonna go through some clips throughout the rest of the video and see how we overcame those cheese moves throughout the game. So here we go. All right, so he starts out with Diamond Kenny Lofton at the top of his lineup, and he has a pretty good at bat. Nothing too shady going on here. He hits the ball on the ground to the third baseman, broken bat, and he whiffs on it. So he gets on base. He's going to steal the base here. And I should have known at this point, probably, especially if you're like me and you have uh, Immortal Mike Piazza behind the plate, he doesn't do well against runners. So if you do have someone, and by the way, I recommend this, having a good defensive backup catcher on your roster, Throw him in there immediately, try to negate the running game as soon as possible. I didn't do that and this guy ran on me all game long. In my opinion, that's not cheese. Even if you have a stud lineup of runners, I don't think it's cheese to just keep running because that's part of the game. It's not really taking advantage of any animations or anything like that. It's just a matchup move playing good baseball. So that's fine. I don't mind when people run on me all day. That's just me having a bad catcher. But now he's going to start doing some wacky things, fake bunting taking some time uh, not too bad early on but it does get worse as the game goes on and this Ben Revere card right here is going to ground out to second base and I actually try to throw home because I see him turning the corner and then he gets back so that is actually a little bit of a cheese move because if I threw it to first base in real life that first baseman probably has enough time to throw it home but in this game, a lot of times he's going to double clutch. He's going to not realize that the guy's going home and he gets home safely when he probably could have been thrown out. In that case, he actually may have been safe regardless. But the fact that he started off this way kind of led me to believe that he's something that he's going to do throughout the game. And now you see he's trying to bunt with JD Martinez. So immediately I try to go up and in. And there he goes. He pops out foul ball on the bunt. So he's out on strikes. And uh, I'll take that one, but I have to know that he's probably going to be bunting whenever he can now. So if you see a guy that likes to bunt, I would go to the defensive settings and change to corners in. You can do that individually, so you press down on the D-pad and hit corners in. I like to do that when guys are bunting so that if they try to go to second base or shortstop on a drag bunt, they can actually field the ball and throw them out because if they're playing all the way back at their natural position, they're probably going to be safe. And that was actually a good play by me. I thought I could get him at third. Chipper Jones came off the bag for no reason, and he gets an extra run because of it. Right here, he's going to go with D. Gordon. He hits a ground ball to second base on the bunt, and like I said, if he's back at that position, like I was just saying, he's going to be safe. He didn't barehand the ball, and because of that, he's safe at first. So that was it for that first inning. Uh, we get Jose Ramirez out, but there's a lot of cheese going on in that inning. What you can also do against a lot of these weaker hitters is pitch up in the zone. I know a lot of people already do this, but if you don't, give it a shot. A lot of weak hitters can't hit the ball properly, but this guy was hitting directional, so it, it still worked out for him. And make sure when a guy is leading off like this, some people like to take massive leadoffs. Don't try to pick him off third base because they will just steal home immediately. And you'll see later on I do that to a guy at second base, he goes to third. 
So try to avoid those pickoffs. Try to step off and try to throw them out because sometimes you can step off and actually get them on the way home. And make sure when you're trying to win rundowns that you have throw canceling on because otherwise, if you don't have throw canceling on, they're gonna keep running and they're gonna be safe every time. So here's a play where the guy actually rounded third base and I pump faked home through the third. And now here, when I pump fake right there with that catcher, usually the guy turns around and tries to go home. Now this guy was an expert cheeser. He knows that move from the defense. So he actually runs all the way back to third base. A lot of times you're not gonna see that. Here I throw through and he's safe, but we can't make the play. This was an unfortunate play where he hits another slow ground ball and I can't make the play at first, but immediately you see that I threw home and he had the second guy rounding third base as well, so I'm able to throw him out. So that's another thing where you can just immediately be ready to throw home with two outs. In case the guy is safe at first, you're probably gonna get the second runner or if there's no runner on third, then that only runner going home from second base is gonna be out every time. But you have to make sure that you're throwing immediately, even preload your throw if you can. So more bunting here going on with JD later in the game. And I made the wrong decision trying to go home there. There's no reason for me to have corners in at that point, uh, but I should have taken the throw at first base, just try to get the easy out instead of trying to go all the way home. Here he actually pinch runs for JD Martinez. He puts Brett Gardner in the game and this is what I was talking about where he actually goes to third immediately on the pickoff move. So I stopped picking off for the most part. I think I only tried three pickoffs in this game and I didn't do it again until later in the game, which you'll see because of that he scores a run and later in the game we're tied 6-6. Here we have no outs. He got his first runner on base. I believe it was with Alex Gordon hitting a broken bat single to the left side. But here is where I finally throw the pickoff move. I saved it for a good time in the clutch and we get him out. Eventually we end up winning that game. You probably saw the gameplay from yesterday where we got the W. So do you always have to score 10 runs to beat a speed cheeser? No. You saw where I made all the mistakes and you can correct those for yourself. Make sure you have throw canceling on. Now if you're not facing an expert cheeser like this guy, one pump fake in a pickle will throw them out every time. Just pump fake, he'll run right back into you. And make sure that when you're throwing in a pickle, that you're running the guy back to the previous base. So for instance, you saw when the guy got back with his 36 speed guy, he got back to the base, but I didn't allow him to score, so it was fine. And of course, try to attack the zone as much as possible. You don't wanna walk anybody, because if you walk someone, they get free bases. A lot of times they're gonna score with a speed runner. In this game, he had directional on, he was hitting the ball on the ground, got a lot of lucky base hits on broken bats and soft infield singles. So make sure you have corners in because if you do have corners in, those infield singles turn into outs. Pitch up in the zone if you can, make sure that you preload throws on the way home. If someone has a guy on second base, you know that he's gonna round third with two outs, just automatically preload your throw from your first baseman. He'll throw the guy out at home every time. And finally, a lot of times if they have the runner on third base or in scoring position, just forget about it. Try to get the outs where you can because they're gonna be sacrificing a lot as well. You wanna get those outs, try to prevent big innings. If you do what I did and throw home on a 94 speed guy, he's probably gonna be safe anyway. So just try to take the outs where you can. Don't give them extra outs because as soon as they get another base runner, they're gonna be trying to score that guy manufacturing runs. So this guy barely deserved any of the runs he got, but as long as you're engaged in the game and making good decisions, based off of what I've told you today, you should be okay. So if you find this video useful, make sure you drop a like, comment below if you have any other cheese that you wanna discuss. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.